good evening. Good evening to all of our alumni and guests, friends and family alike. I'm so sorry that we can't be together in person on this lovely evening in Salem, Oregon, but I'd still like to welcome you home virtually to Willamette University. We are gathered tonight to honor a fantastic group of Bearcats who were nominated by the Willamette community, reviewed by our dedicated alumni awards committee and selected by our alumni board of directors as the recipients of both our 2020 and our 2021 alumni awards. I'm going to come back in a few minutes and join you again, but for now I'm going to turn this event over to the president of the alumni board of directors, Linda Lewis. Good evening, Bearcats. Thank you for joining us for this celebratory evening. I'm Linda Lewis, President of the Alumni Board of Directors and your host for this evening's festivities. It's truly an honor to be able to serve on the Alumni Board of Directors. And for those of you who aren't familiar with us, we're a group of 36 of Willamette's most committed volunteers. The Alumni Board is charged to further the interests of Willamette University and its alumni, to establish closer relationships between alumni and the university and its students, to promote activities beneficial to the university and its alumni, and in general, to promote the university to its constituents and the community. And that's a mouthful, but we do a lot of things as a board. The Willamette University Alumni Board has been honoring exemplary alumni since 1957. And today we're pleased to welcome our latest inductees into this distinguished group. And for those past recipients who have joined us this evening, we are so glad you're here. It's good to see you again. The Alumni Board of Directors selects alumni winners annually in three categories, young alumni leadership, distinguished alumni citation for professional achievement or service to community, and the Lessel J. Sparks Medallion for lifetime loyalty and service to Willamette. I've had the honor of serving as a member of the Alumni Board for nearly a decade now, and I've been amazed by the caliber of nominations and awardees during that time. This year is no exception. I continue to be impressed by the strength, diversity, and dedication of our alumni community who embody, embody rather our motto, not into ourselves alone are we born. 
through lives of meaning and contribution. So you'll probably remember that last year's alumni reunion weekend was canceled and obviously we're virtual this year. In order to celebrate the alumni award recipients from both years, we will first award the 2020 winners and then we will award the recipients from 2021. So let us begin. First, we'll recognize the 2020 recipient of the Lo Young Alumni Leadership Award. This honor recognizes graduates from the past 10 years for outstanding leadership in their vocation, community service, and service to the university. And our recipient for this award is Rebecca Alexander from the College of Arts and Sciences Class of 2010. I have been big my whole life. I used to be the kind of person that would get on an airplane and think that if I crossed my arms over my chest and like held my knees together for the whole flight, I would be a different size somehow. And I remember doing that right basically up until I decided to start Algo. Algo is a plus size community for people that want to let other plus size people know what to expect when they go out. So we have a mobile app that's kind of like Yelp, where people can literally review public spaces and say, do tables and booths move? Do chairs have arms? Kind of basic questions about accessibility of our physical world. Algo has been accepted into a couple of prestigious programs. First, you know, we won a pitch competition and the Oregon Pitch Fest. And then we were accepted into the Portland Incubator Experiment, which is our area's leading startup incubator. I'm passionate about the work that I do because it's about justice. You know, it's about access to healthcare. It's about access to activities that support our mental health and well being as plus size people. I deserve dignity and respect, and so does every other plus size person in the world. Receiving the Young Alumni Leadership Award for Innovative Achievement to me is such an honor and a privilege. And I love, you know, that as a plus size person, I'm getting this recognition and that current students at Willamette who are plus size can see that, you know, we are leaders too. I couldn't have built Algo without the empathy and the understanding that I gained about other people at Willamette. The Willamette motto, you know, not unto ourselves alone are we born. It always spoke to me. We have this shared ethos around serving other people. It's a huge part of what makes, you know, Bearcats Bearcats, and it's so core to who I am. So it's really, it's special. And Rebecca, I'd like to invite you to say a few words if you'd like. Thank you very much for having me this evening. And um, it's really, you know, I, I wish I could see all of you in person. Um, this is such a like wonderful honor, but also, you know, a bittersweet moment because I don't get to celebrate um, with all of you face to face, all these fellow Bearcats, um, hopefully someday in the future. <laughs> um, you know, this has been a really trying year. Um, year plus uh, for our community and for our world. And uh, it's been a trying year for me personally as well. Um, and I just want to say thank you to Willamette and to the Alumni Awards Committee for choosing to recognize my work tonight. Um, it means a lot to have this recognition and um, to, have your endorsement for the work that I do um, to make the world a more inclusive place, uh, especially for plus size people. So thank you all very much for the recognition tonight. Um, I need it now um, in June 2021 that I think I needed it when I was initially awarded this award, you know, more than a year ago. So um, thank you for following through and thank you for, you know, giving me this opportunity to feel special tonight. I really appreciate it. I look forward to seeing the rest of the awardees later this evening. Congratulations, Rebecca. Next, we honor our four 2020 Distinguished Alumni Citation awardees. The Distinguished Alumni Citation recognizes Willamette graduates who, 
in professional achievement and service to their communities represent the university in an exemplary manner by embodying its highest ideals as represented in its motto, not unto ourselves alone are we born. Our recipients of the Distinguished Alumni Citation Non Nobis Solum Award are Barbara and Bobby Griffin, both from the class of 1959. It was December 5th, 1955. I can still remember that pajama dance and, and the young woman who introduced us. We had a mutual friend and she was uh, trying to set us up on, on a blind date, but I knew nothing about this guy. And she encouraged me by saying, well, he's not bad looking when his nose heals up. And she went on to explain that he was a football player and had uh, a pretty smashed nose from playing football. And we've been dating ever since. <laughs> so it, it worked out. I have a lot of gratitude about going to Willamette. We still fondly remember uh, several professors who influenced us and influenced our love for learning. I especially enjoyed being exposed to new things, new thoughts, new ideas. It just meeting people with a broader mm -hmm. perspective of the world was helpful to me. I did pursue education in nursing and then had a career as an RN. I gravitated toward developing devices that would help people. And I was hired by Medtronic because of something I invented. And I ended up as president of the pacemaker business and on the executive committee that ran the company. And during that time period, I went traveling with Barbara. That's kind of what led us into getting involved in Africa. We sponsored a young Tanzanian woman and her father invited us to Tanzania in 2001. Because of our medical backgrounds, we were showing medical services and hospitals. I was struck by the maternity child death rate of that country. It was just unbelievable. We looked at Tanzania and realized that they needed more tools. So we set out with the idea of creating a hospital that was sustainable with an independent trust where the trustees were selected on the basis of their capabilities. Dodoma Tanzania Health Development is essentially a 501c3 that was founded in order to help support and develop Dodoma Christian Medical Center in Tanzania. By design, it was set up to be Tanzanian-led. We wanted something led by the people there who we respect greatly both in terms of their capability and their interest in improving healthcare. We've been so inspired by the Tanzanians, the compassion they have for helping their people, the work ethic that they have at our hospital is amazing. We strongly believe that something has been planted that the roots have taken hold and the people are expanding it and developing it on their own to the extent that we've been the people that have helped make that happen. We are thankful for the opportunity. We're both very, very proud and humbled to receive the Non Noble Solemn Award. We have always had the philosophy to live on behalf of your fellow men. And Barbara and Bobby, would you like to come forward in the Zoom chat and say a few words? Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, and thank you for the Alumni Committee. And thank you, uh, Willamette, for this award and for holding fast to the non nobis solum model throughout the years. We heard it first at our introductory uh, assembly in 1955. Receiving the award gives us opportunity to draw attention to what opening one's heart to the needs of others can do. We had no idea what caring about the education of one young Tanzanian woman uh, would do and where it would lead us. The young woman came into our lives in 1997 and through her we became aware of the unmet medical needs and the calling to help began. And it is there we met the dedicated, bright, hardworking, visionary Tanzanians and, and discovered their skills and their abilities to make the hospital success. And we dedicate the award to the Tanzanian staff who are caring for addition, the additional burden of unchecked COVID pandemic. They are leading examples of non-Nobis Solum. 
we are humbled and grateful for the recognition. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, congratulations to you both. Our first recipient of the 2020 Distinguished Alumni Citation for Professional Achievement is Virginia Linder from the Willamette Law Class of 1980. The path to the Supreme Court, it's not a path I knew I would take at all. It happened one stepping stone at a time. In junior year of high school, in a civics class, we started studying courtrooms and the court system. That was interesting. And we took a field trip to the Sacramento Superior Court one day, and we watched a bit of a trial, and that was interesting. I just gravitated to it from there. It made sense to me to come to Salem and to the seat of state government to study law. Willamette's right across the street from all of that, so you're exposed to it from the time you're a law student. I've had a really, really fortunate career, and a lot of it was luck. As of 1982, two years after I became a lawyer, the Oregon Supreme Court had its first woman, Betty Roberts. Judge Graber became the next woman after Judge Graber, Judge Leeson. When Justice Leeson retired, the governor filled the position with another man. Oregon found itself one of only two states in the nation with no woman on its court. So there was a whole lot of energy in Oregon to have a woman step into that race. And I was well positioned. I had a lot of experience. I had been Solicitor General. I was on the Court of Appeals. So I had this big heart to heart with my partner and I talked to Betty Roberts. And the next thing I knew, I, it was kind of like somebody pushed me out of the airplane. I just had to pull the parachute and keep going. And I won. <laughs> Achieving that felt like a special accomplishment for me and all of my women peers. I wasn't the first woman on the court, but I was the first that got there through a contested election. And I was an open lesbian. And I feel a great sense of pride in having been able to do the things I did without shying away from it. Receiving the Distinguished Alumni Citation for a Professional Achievement Award means something special to me. My time at Willamette shaped my career and it became the natural launching point for me. It's flattering and humbling and this is just a really proud moment. And Virginia, would you like to come forward and say a few things? Uh, yes, thank you, uh, Linda and President uh, Forsett. I'm a little choked up, frankly, to have just watched 40 years of my <laughs> life and career flash before my eyes. Um, <laughs> all I can think of right now is my father used to quote the conventional wisdom that um, if you can't improve on silence, don't say anything. <laughs> I feel like I can't improve on that video. So uh, it's it's a little hard to, I'm flattered beyond words, um, I guess I should say. Uh, it, it really does have me choked up to, <clears throat> to see all of that uh, all assembled. So I, I think all I really want to do is, is uh, offer a few thanks. Uh, and I'm going to start with the, the crew who has made a lot of this possible that's maybe not as much in the forefront. Um, Eric Lesson, who, Eric, <laughs> you've herded me for the last year and a half. Thank you for hanging in there. Getting through 2020 wasn't easy for anybody. I didn't envy him his job. And I really want to give a special shout out to um, Eric and, and Saleh and Heather of the media production companies that put all that together. It's sort of been a treasure for me to sit here for two minutes and watch it. Um, and to the board, the Alumni Board of Directors, this, this really is an honor. Um, something that didn't make it into the movie that, that I would just like to add to it is, it's one thing to be acknowledged in your profession when you have a profession like law that's sort of a tight community and, and we all know what we do and see each other's achievements and efforts. And uh, this, is a, this is a distinctive honor because it 
It comes from the university. And as these awards show, and as the, word, the awards in the past show, the people that come out of these multiple disciplines do so many wonderful things in their lives. And, um, and they're not always spotlighted, but they are the things that make a difference in the world. And it is a huge privilege. I am grateful for the opportunity to be among the ranks of those who since 1957 have been honored for going out there in the world and what they do. Um, so with that, I'll just say uh, thanks to everybody from the bottom all the way to the top of my heart. I am profoundly honored. Well, congratulations, Virginia, well-deserved. Next, we honor Paul Brusek, class of 1974, who is also receiving the 2020 Distinguished Alumni Citation for Professional Achievement. Working on all the Lord of the Rings was a transformative time in my life, my career as a music producer. It really was and felt like a fellowship. I got to know the musicians so well because we stayed together for three years. And it's so exciting to be out there and standing behind your composer who's conducting and hear the sound all come together. We didn't know it was going to work. It was a big gamble. And the way it was received it was joyous. My name is Paul Brusek and I'm president of music at Warner Brothers Pictures. Willamette was a breath of fresh air for me at the right time in my life. I didn't want a big school. I wanted something unique and I just thought it was magical. The Willamette years for me were a great time and environment to explore. I felt really academically, intellectually safe in a place of beauty. I loved the fact that I could pick a lot of great classes, philosophy of economics, comparative religion, and had great teachers and felt support from them. I played piano, played clarinet, was in rock bands, and I got involved in going to a lot of concerts, both in Portland and Salem. When I didn't spend money on music, it was going to the movies. I just threw myself into every opportunity I could. The 70s was such a great time for films. When I got out of school, I fell into a job at American Zoetrope, which is Francis Coppola's company, as a tape op or a machine room operator on the mix of Apocalypse Now. That wasn't my plan, but it opened the door to, to working in film. I got approached in 1996. Did I want to come in-house and work at New Line Cinema? Soon after I got there, I took over as head of music at New Line, did Lord of the Rings during that period, and then I moved over to Warner Brothers about 12 years ago. I'm waiting for the day I wake up and go, oh yeah, well, you know, I'm tired of it. It does just not happening. I actually get more passionate and more excited and more ambitious about being creative. It feels really great to receive the Distinguished Alumni Citation for Professional Achievement from Willamette. I've been part of and still am part of the Willamette community, and I'm very grateful, very appreciative, and I'm proud. And I recognize some of those 70 shots in, those, in that video, so I, I can relate to the 1970s. Um, Paul, would you like to uh, come forward and make a few remarks? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much uh, for welcoming me. I'm sort of, you know, I feel like a, uh, I'm a time traveler because actually my award is from 2020. And we all know, uh, I think we all know what happened last year, the missing year. Um, but I'm glad to be here. Uh, first of all, thank you, uh, President Thorsett, who I look forward to meeting you in person. I'm threatening to come up and do some master classes. I've been doing them via Zoom and other platforms for a few years with Mike Nord and the media group. Uh, and I love doing it. I love giving back. And Sherry Radcliffe, who interviewed me a few months back, and I was telling Eric yesterday that Sherry's such a mu um, movie buff that um, I've done a number of interviews and behind the scenes EPK stuff for films I've worked on. But I, I looked at and watched my interview with Sherry and I thought she might be the best interview that I've ever done. So um, I thank her for, for finding me, outing me. Eric uh, Lawson, who's been super patient with, with me and uh, are, you know, I realized my photos are all over the place. So it's now I'm, so give me another award in 10 years and I'm gonna have a great photo archive for you guys and your whole media production crew and um, uh, the team that put together the video. I, I, I do appreciate that. Um, you know, I don't have quite a story to tell. Um, I'm not doing humanitarian work uh, in, in 
feature film land. Um, I'm not doing legal uh, public service work. Uh, and kudos to my fellow, uh, you know, alums who are being honored tonight. Um, but I do like to think that, you know, and, and we anchored my story around Lord of the Rings because it really was a transitional and a pivotal experience for me. I felt that we were making, we had a great responsibility to tell a story for a generation. I used to say to my crew and anybody that would listen, we're making three Wizard of Oz's. And I've been watching those things for every decade I've been alive. And we better get this right so that generations that watch them decades from now will, will still understand the heart and the story and how we told it. So we're storytellers. Hopefully, you know, and I've been blessed to be involved with great storytelling uh, that we're inspiring future generations of kids, uh, teens, young adults, and the rest of us. Um, to make the world a better place, a more inspiring place. We challenge people with ideas. Recently, I worked on films like Just Mercy and Jesus and the Black Messiah, two films I'm extremely proud of having worked on. They're not quite Lord of the Rings, but they're important stories to tell. And um, I look forward to continuing to do this work until they tell me to go home. <laughs> so thank you very much for honoring me tonight. I do have a special place in my heart for Willamette. Um, I can still smell the beauty of that place when I came to visit it as in the spring of my senior year. I was born and raised in Oak Park, Illinois, and went through there, grew up there, and never been to the Pacific Northwest, never been to Oregon. And I flew out just to check out the school that I wanted to go to, and I fell in love immediately. So thank you, Willamette. Congratulations, Paul. Our next honoree is receiving our next honoree rather receiving the 2020 distinguished alumni citation alum of the year is luis guerra from the class of 2021 when folks ask me why i'm passionate about the work that i'm doing it really brings me back to my personal story i was born in mexico about a mile south of the border and raised about a mile north of the border and growing up near the border it, i knew at a very young age some members in my family could cross it and some couldn't i had privileges that other members in my family didn't my name is luis guerra and i graduated from willamette in 2011 with a double major in international studies and spanish and a minor in latin american studies i really gravitated towards a lot of those courses because i was learning about my own culture and history that i didn't get to learn while i was in high school it's interesting that i had to leave the border to learn a lot about these things that were happening in my own backyard and how they were affecting communities all over the country after Willamette, I worked for GAUSA, the statewide immigrant rights organization, helping push for benefits for a lot of the farm workers and immigrants that had been in Oregon for many years. I'm now working for the Catholic Legal Immigration Network to increase resources and information for asylum seekers on both sides of the border. In the fall of 2018, there were large exoduses of asylum seekers arriving at our southern border. My organization allowed me to go down to Tijuana, Mexico to figure out how we could help. There were hundreds of volunteers and my role was to figure out how to harness the volunteer energy into a more coordinated response. We developed a model that is being replicated all across the southern border. Receiving the Distinguished Alum of the Year Award from Willamette is very meaningful because it's, it's a reminder to me that sacrifices that my, my parents made were worth it. The Willamette motto, not unto ourselves alone are we born, means to me that we must figure out how to get back. Whatever little that we have to offer, we're stronger together as a community. And Luis, would you like to make a few words, say a few words? Thank you, Linda, and thank you uh, the, uh, to the alumni uh, committee and everyone that made today possible. I'm deeply humbled by this recognition and just want to reiterate that it, it validates all the investment made in me, uh, first-generation immigrant, 
student of color, not only by the Willamette community, whether it be the faculty, the professors, um, the, the coaches in the athletic department that I, I was able to participate in while I was at Willamette, my family uh, and loved ones uh, where um, there were times at Willamette where they were rocky and actually I, I struggled financially or uh, just identity wise trying to figure out do I actually belong in in such an, a wonderful institution um, uh, questioning whether or not I could make it through the end of, of my education and uh, I was lucky enough to actually meet my my life partner Angela Fuji who's also a Bearcat one I, I couldn't have done it without her um, and and of course um, um, just super grateful for the foundation that Willamette created for me to create these professional connections within the Oregon community. Um, and, and, and just once again, reiterate how, how thankful and humbled and honored I am. Um, and why I personally know one, that I want to continue to look for ways to continue to invest in, in young students that may have a similar upbringing like the one I do. Um, that who may think that they can't make it or or don't fit or don't belong um, in a university setting so that they can be uh, as or feel one day as lucky as I do to to be able to um, make a living out of work that I'm so passionate of. And lastly, I just want to say that I want to dedicate this award. I know 2020 was been a year that's been tough for many of us, but uh, I, I couldn't have enough time to just say how tough it's been to the communities that we've been working with at the southern border on the things that they have to go day in and day out to just uh, survive another day. Uh, definitely want to de dedicate this award to uh, many folks who are seeking just uh, uh, protection and human dignity and, uh, and thank you all uh, for, for this recognition. I would like to offer my own congratulations to all of these 2020 award winners. What an inspiring group of Bearcats. It is my distinct privilege now to present the Sparks Medallions. The Sparks Medallion recognizes alums whose lifetime loyalty and service to Willamette reflects the ideals of one of the university's most devoted alumni, Lestal Sparks, class of 1919. And the first honoree for the Les Sparks Medallion is Sue Rao of the class of 1975. I was a colleague and very dear friend of Sue Rao for over 30 years in the Willamette Office of Admission. She was just a remarkable person. She was outrageous, outspoken, also an absolutely empathetic and kind and generous person hilarious. She could make you laugh about anything and she kept us laughing till the day she died. I met Sue in December of 1981 when I interviewed for an internship position in the Office of Admission. I remember leaving the interview and thinking, I don't think I can work with this woman. However, a few months later, she was my mentor, my very best friend for life, and my partner in crime on many adventures. She was a colleague and, and became obviously a very, very close friend. She was especially smart. She was especially hardworking. She was very opinionated and very knowledgeable about a lot of subjects. She would get up at five in the morning and read for two hours before she left for work. And she had the ability to read probably 10 to 12 books a month easily. She was such an avid reader, but she clearly had the quantitative gene as well. It went way beyond basic mathematics. That led her to really provide some leadership, both in our office and campus-wide, as the world evolved into new technology. We had a giant, clunky, old computer at the time that when you think about how much effort it was to get even the tiniest bit of information out of it, it, it was unbelievable. But Sue was able to see through that and understand what it was we needed to do to get ourselves computerized and jump into the world of technology. Her impact on Willamette was great. She was an important part 
of diversifying the college as well. She really helped Willamette become a considerably more interesting place because of the students that she helped bring. She was curious about people. She wanted to know about their background, how their experiences differed from her own. She had a huge heart and she embraced everyone into her life. She just had a really wonderful knack of connecting with all kinds of different people. And she also had a steady parade of people coming in the office to see her all the time. She always had time for a student who was struggling or a professor who had a gripe about something or whatever it was. And they would come, plop down, talk to Sue, and they always went out smiling. Willamette University is a community united by an ideal. And I really believe Sue was devoted to promoting and sharing that ideal throughout her entire lifetime. She gave very generously to scholarship funds and university building projects and was there for various volunteer efforts. She loved Willamette in every way and gave her heart and soul always. I am so glad that Willamette is recognizing Sue with the Lessel J. Sparks medallion. I'm touched and just simply so glad that she's being honored sitting on the pond in the middle of the campus. There's a lovely bench dedicated to her and that will always be a reminder, as will the Les Sparks Medallion, of her long-term impact on the institution. It would be hard for me to think of anybody more deserving than Sue Rao. I'd like to invite Jim Sumner, Emeritus Dean of Admission at Willamette University to say a few words on behalf of Sue. Thank you, Steve and Linda and Eric and uh, all of the others who contributed to this uh, great, great effort. I'm honored to be here to accept the award on behalf of Sue and her family. And uh, believe it or not, I will be brief. I, I do want to say that I, I can tell one quick anecdote that I think is a summary of her impact on the institution over time. Uh, Sue and I worked together almost continuously for 25 years from 1975 until 2000. I left Willamette, but thanks to Steve, I was able to come back and spend most of 2012 and 13 back at Willamette. And so I was back in the same office, uh, same title, working with some of the same wonderful people uh, with a little bit different set of responsibilities, but a pretty similar situation. And I'd been back about four or five days and our son who lives in England called me and he said, so you're back, same office, et cetera, et cetera. How many times have you walked back to Sue's old office expecting to have something happen? You expected either to get a problem solved, to get a difficult question answered, to laugh, or to uh, be entertained generally. And to me, that's really was a good summary of who she was. She provided Willamette with a ton of good ideas. She solved a ton of important problems. She provided a ton of laughter and she entertained us always throughout the process. So. Thanks to everyone who made this award possible, the Sparks Award. And, uh, and as I say, uh, thanks, particularly on behalf of Sue and her family. Thank you. And thank you, Jim. The next honoree for the last Sparks Medallion is Jeff Hetherington from the class of 1965. I've been in healthcare for 45 years. It is clear to everybody the healthcare system doesn't really work. It's too expensive, it's cumbersome, and people have more and more trouble accessing the system. The real problem we have today is that it's all about the money and it's not about long term investment. There's a lot more that we can look at to fix the healthcare system. Starting in the early 80s, Jeff and Family Care helped the state of Oregon expand the care of the most needy of our population and develop innovative, integrative approaches to best treat more Oregonians. 
when he started family care and they began to really look at how insurance was handled, how it was dispersed, how it was sold, and how people were covered by that insurance. He just raised the level of questions and then of answers. My experience at Willamette changed my perspective on life because it was a very warm family feeling the minute you got on campus. The relationship that we had with our professors really shaped my thinking. I learned that relationships matter and it, it helped me considerably. I first met Jeff 45 years ago. I had just married Frank Roberts and I was working on his staff and Jeff was lobbying in the legislature in the building. I got to know him when he came into Frank's office all the time and occasionally brought chocolate chip cookies. And even when Frank was terminally ill and couldn't hardly eat anything, Jeff would show up with chocolate chip cookies and the two of them would have a laugh about that. When things are tough and you need somebody's shoulder, he's your man. <laughs> He's got a big heart and he genuinely cares about people. He's always been there to help everybody. We can go to Hawaii, we can go to California, and we'll meet somebody that he's helped out along the way. That's just the type of person he is. The Hetherington Foundation for Innovation and Education and Healthcare was started in 2014. What we're looking for is to promote health and create healthy communities. And in the last couple of years, we broadened our scope to start funding local charities. Particularly with COVID, we jumped in not only with people who were distributing food, but people delivering medical supplies. I've known Jeff Hetherington for over 40 years. Mr. Hetherington has a deep drive in his heart for the population that he serves and the people of the state of Oregon. Jeff is an enormously respected alumnus of our institution and he's so supportive of our students and of the work of the institution. He really does represent the motto and the mission of the campus. Receiving the Sparks Medallion is, is really quite an honor. It is Willamette's ultimate acknowledgement to an alumnus. I'm certainly proud of the fact that I've been a part of Willamette for all these years and been able to contribute. Dad, I'm very proud of you for receiving the Sparks Medallion. You deserve it. You've worked hard. You've helped everybody along the way. I'm really proud of you. Jeff, would you like to step forward and say a few words? Sure. Um, I, first of all, I'd like to thank um, the university for um, this honor. It is, um, it's one of those things that's very humbling and um, very much appreciated. The thing that uh, in, in thinking about uh, this evening and the comments that I was going to make was that, you know, I think virtually every Willamette graduate can say that um, the reason they have been able to excel in their um, chosen fields, I chose seven different ones as I was moving along, but um, is because of what they, what they received from Willamette. And frankly, you know, people have dedicated uh, this honor to various and sundry uh, individuals, but mine really goes to the um, faculty that was there from 1961 to 65 and to those who have continued on because not only did they give us a good education and um, um, skills at learning new things, but they imparted to us a sense of humanity and um, a passion for continued learning and service to the community. And so um, I'm very appreciative, not only of, of uh, the gift of this uh, medallion, but more so the education that I got and frankly, the lifelong learning that allowed me to be so successful. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Jeff, and it's wonderful to see you again after many years of service on the Alumni Board. And now we get to shift gears a little bit and recognize our Alumni Award winners from this year. For 2021, we honor five Distinguished Alumni Citation Awardees. 
As a reminder, the Distinguished Alumni Citation recognizes Willamette graduates who, in professional achievement and service to their communities, represent the university in an exemplary manner by embodying its highest ideals as represented in its motto, not into ourselves alone are we born. Our first recipient of the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Citation Nanobi Solem Award is Salome, Salome Chimuku from the class of 2013. I was born in Portland, Oregon. My family is from Angola, Africa, and spent about 18 years in a refugee camp in Zambia. With my parents being political asylum refugees, I always knew I wanted to work somewhere in, in regards to politics or activism. I think that I was a little eager when I went to Lamette. I worked all four years at the legislature. I learned how to speak diplomatically, how to tell my own story, and how to be comfortable with being different. Right after graduation, I went to work as a public policy advisor to two different nonprofits in the Portland area at the same time. And I passed Oregon's End Profiling Act, which was really amazing because on our legislative day, as well as hearing dates for that bill, a lot of the Willamette political science professors brought their students to come testify and see this in action. I guess my, my biggest achievement to date yet is uh, co-founding the Black Resilience Fund, which has so far raised almost $3 million to give direct financial assistance to those who identify as Black in the greater Portland area. In the height of 2020, I found myself someone who I would be considered accomplished, jobless, no idea how I was gonna pay rent, and feeling like the systems that should have been helping me out were failing me on top of the amount of systemic racism that was happening. And so I was like, if I've fallen in this gap, that means that there's hundreds, if not thousands, have fallen in this gap, if not deeper down than I have. And so helping my community was me making sure that I lived by the Willamette motto and wanting to make my community and the world a better place. That is why I went to Willamette. Receiving the non Nobis Salom Award means so much to me. To get this award from Willamette gives me that affirmation that I'm living by that motto that drew me to the university that really did change the course of my life. And Salome, would you like to say a few words this evening? Yes, thank you. Um, it is a huge honor to get this award. I'm kind of taken aback by watching the video because I don't get many opportunities to look at myself. So it was really fun to see that, see myself and also to see my dog featured in this video because I had no idea what was going to happen. But I am so gratefully, grateful and touched by all the support I've gotten over the years, especially from my professors at Willamette, as well as my own family. Um, definitely coming from a large family, um, mostly men, has made me very strong in how I present myself, how I use my voice, and also my time at Willamette gave me the foundation I needed to have others see what my professors and my family saw in me. And so even today, as I continue working in more or less public sector, and right now working on one of the biggest transportation issues happening in our state, I do keep that in mind of what else can be done for the community, what else can we do moving forward, and what else is there to be done. And so thank you so much, Willamette. Thank you so much for all the support. Thanks to my family and my friends for always being there to help get me through those tough long nights of thesis writing and also uh, problem solving. And so um, I am very humbled and grateful for this award. Well, congratulations to you, well-deserved. Our next recipient of the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Citation Non Nobis Solum Award is Gordon Greathouse from the class of 1970. I began working with black and Puerto Rican teenagers at the end of the 60s. And I ended up working in an all black church in the South Bronx at one of the most violent times of New York's history. I was so shocked by what I saw. I visited the kids in their homes. I went to their school and sat in their classrooms. And I saw that they really didn't have a chance. The, the, the drugs, the gangs, the poor quality of education, the violence made it so that they didn't have an opportunity. So I really threw myself into that work. My name is Gordon Greathouse. 
and I graduated in 1970 from Willamette University. Willamette well, really shaped me by giving me discipline, by giving me intellectual curiosity, but more than anything by making me think about what my life was going to be given to and, and what difference I could make. I followed up in New York by going to an education program in Mexico, and it was there that I met my wife. Eventually, I visited her when she was working in the Amazon, and I got to see that the, the social structures that I saw in New York City, the lack of opportunity was even more widespread in Latin America. Over 40 years work in Brazil, we helped develop a community center that was a model program. We started Habitat for Humanity in Brazil, and we helped found Shade and Freshwater, this after-school program that works across the country. What was rewarding more than anything is to see the kids that have grown up in the programs become volunteers and become teachers and are contributing to make a better community. It's when you see lives changed and when you see kids grow up and have an opportunity they wouldn't have had. It really brings home why you are doing what you're doing. And the benefits I got from Willamette, I'm able to share with other people. Without a doubt, receiving the Non Nobis Solum Award is a great honor. It is also a very humbling experience. Without my wife, I would have never been able to have worked with the Brazilians. And this award is a recognition of all the people that enable me to, to be present and to make the difference that I could, could make with my own life. And Gordon, would you like to come forward and say a few words? Thank you. It is really an honor to, to be here tonight and to receive this award. Um, it's been 43 years that I've been here in Brazil and I'll continue to, to be here as long as uh, I'm able to continue the work. I know that it will be a plaque that I receive and my name will be on it. But the truth of the matter is that there are so many people behind this, this work. I wouldn't be in Brazil if it hadn't been for my wife, who as a Brazilian educator knew how to work with people of low income and, and from different cultural and ethnic backgrounds. And there are hundreds of volunteers in our 53 projects of shade and fresh water around the country. And we've received many different volunteers from the United States that that have come and sometimes some of them even say, send me to the place that nobody would want to go. And so they come and help us do the projects and help us reach out to the, to the kids. My greatest reward is really seeing lives changed, seeing young people that have opportunities. And many of them then become uh, kids that want to become volunteers in the project and become educators. And that is so rewarding and so, so encouraging and fills me with such hope and passion as I think you can probably see from, from this video. When I was at Willamette, I had professors that listened to me and cared about me. They helped me with my intellectual development, but it was that personal relationship that really made the difference. And so in our programs, that's what we would try to carry on as well taking it to the kids that probably don't have a chance for the education that, that many of the people in the States have. But that same caring and loving and listening can help them as it helped me gain a sense of who we are and what we want to work for. My great hope and my great prayer tonight is really that, that all of us are encouraged to do the most we can to help promote a more just and uh, loving world where all God's children have a chance to grow up as he would like them to grow up. Thank you so much for this, this moment to share my passion for a better world. Thank you. Congratulations, Gordon. Well earned. Our recipient of the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Citation for Professional Achievement is Christine Sleeter from the class of 1970. 
When I was at Willamette, I was one of the cheerleaders. And I remember one of my German professors said, Christy, life to you is just one big rally. <laughs> and probably at the time it was. But I also knew that there was something bigger and something more important I needed to do. And I couldn't have predicted what it ended up being. My name is Christine Sleater, and I'm a professor emerita at California State University, Monterey Bay. I got a strong education at Willamette. The smallness of the classes and people really pushing you to think, you know, that you take with you. I graduated not knowing what I wanted to do and then stumbled on a program for preparing teachers to work in inner city schools. I also lived in the community that I was working in. They gave me a major re-education about how this country works. It, it actually ended up being one of those turning points that really changed my life. My education had been very white up to that point, and I began to see that my experience as a white person was very different from experiences of African Americans. I started reading what I later came to know as ethnic studies literature. And I think Willamette gave me tools for being able to become my own teacher, pick up books and do self-study. While I was a teacher in Seattle Public Schools, I wondered why was the whole education I got very white. We're a very culturally diverse country that is, has been built on foundations of racism and colonization. What could curriculum look like that would help future generations work toward racial justice and social justice? I gradually began turning my efforts toward diversifying the teaching population and have done some work through the National Association for Multicultural Education, which I was president of for three years, challenging white supremacy in education. When I see injustices that don't have to be the way they are, that people I care about are continuing to experience, that keeps me going. Receiving the Distinguished Alumni Citation for Professional Achievement means a great deal to me coming from Willamette because it validates the work that I've been doing over the last 50 years. And Willamette really helped launch me into my work. And Christine, would you like to say a few words? I'm just absolutely um, flabbergasted watching the wonderful video. I, I know I was there being interviewed and making it, but they did a terrific job of pulling it together. I, I want to extend my thanks to Willamette University for this award when I was called um, to um, tell me that I was receiving it. I was just like, I, I couldn't believe it. This is a, a, a truly honor that I, I value very much. And I would also like to thank my colleague and friend, um, Curtis Acosta of the class of 94, who was uh, wonderful, thoughtful to um, nominate me for this award. He's somebody who I've done some work with and have, have known professionally for quite a while. And it was wonderful when we discovered that we were both Bearcats. When I was a student at Willamette, I wouldn't have thought, and nobody else around me would have thought either, that after graduation, I, this white girl from Medford, Oregon, would end up spending the next 50 years learning how to work for racial justice. Um, I think Willamette gave me tools for doing that. Um, as I said in the video, it gave me certainly some intellectual tools, some learning tools, and a belief in myself, a belief that I could tackle something that would be challenging and difficult, and, and that I could figure out my way forward. So I want to thank Willamette very much. I just want to thank um, the support that I've received from friends, um, both at Willamette as well as elsewhere, but the friendships I made at Willamette, some of them have continued for 50 years, and, and that's really quite tremendous. And I also have appreciated over the years the uh, support of the friends, the family that I have, both in Oregon as well as in Wisconsin. So thank you. Just thank you so much. Well, congratulations, Christine, and that's a great story. Our next honoree receiving the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Citation Alum of the Year is Anna Osland from the class of 1999. 
As a teacher in DC, I saw that there was a big difference in the education that I had received growing up in Colorado compared to what the students at the high school I was teaching at were getting. How could this happen? How could we be in the same country and receive such a different education? That continues to, to drive me to work on educational inequity now. My name is Anna Osland, and I graduated from Willamette in 1999. The professors there were great. I loved the small classes. I found a community of like-minded people interested in serving their community. They were interested in thinking about the greater good. After I was at Willamette, I was a Teach for America teacher in Washington, D.C. But also, I worked in international disaster reconstruction. In 2001, El Salvador had a really big earthquake that leveled 85% of the homes in the eastern part of the country. And so I worked with the Salvation Army to do disaster reconstruction there. I went back to graduate school and gained a lot of the technical skills and the research skills needed to do the work that I do at the Blanco Public Policy Center now. One of the things that I'm most proud of is the, the Link and Learn project. My children go to public school here in Lafayette, and during the pandemic, when they went home March 13th, their school year never restarted, and I was just flabbergasted. I knew across the country that children were going back to school, and I just couldn't understand why that was impossible here. So I worked with a group of community leaders here to make sure that that wouldn't happen when we went back to school in the fall. We knew that we had about 7,000 of our 30,000 students here that didn't have home internet, and that was unacceptable. But I collaborated with business groups, with community groups, with our faith leaders, with our school systems, with our state partners. We came up with wireless buses, hotspots. We did home internet. We worked with Cox and AT&T to come up with low-cost internet solutions for students. Receiving the Distinguished Alum of the Year Award from Willamette is an honor. I've done a lot since I was at Willamette, but the education I received is a big part of my success. And Anna, would you like to say a few words this evening? I knew it was just her audio going through the feed. Oh. Hey, and I think your mic isn't working. Um, can you just check that the right one's connected? I like to joke that with every connectivity meeting, there's a connectivity challenge. So I think it's um, telling that my uh, connection would be the one with the connectivity challenge. So um, I've been on a lot of connectivity meetings over the last uh, year and a half, and there's always something that goes wrong. So, <laughs> um, you know, as I was saying before, I think that there are so many things uh, that Willamette, so many tools, um, so many friendships that Willamette gave me that were instrumental in launching my career and continue to sustain me today. So there's a group of women um, that have, you know, pulled together and pulled each other up. And, you know, I'm just amazed that I can share the stage um, with Kendra Yee, who will be um, coming after me, but also, you know, with a whole, a whole community of people who are like-minded. And I think the videos that we've seen tonight really share, um, you know, so much of that passion for making our community a better place that I love about Willamette. Um, I love that we're highlighting all of these wonderful projects um, that really show the importance of of giving back to our community and making our world a better place. Um, but we know that the work is not done, um, that this is not the end, that there's so much to be done and there are so many good people out there that are doing this work every day. Um, zip code should not be destiny for, you know, how a child is able to learn, um, you know, where they're born should not, you know, turn out, you know, 
the education that they should be able to receive. And so there's so much work to be done. And I'm just grateful to be in this work um, and doing these projects with so many like-minded people. Um, and I count all of the Willamette uh, folks on this uh, Zoom tonight as you know people that are out there you know, doing the best that they can for their community. So um, congratulations to everyone else and um, thank you so much. Thanks, Anna, for all your hard work and congratulations. Next, we honor Kendra Yee, class of 1999, who is also receiving the 2021 Distinguished Alumni Citation Alum of the Year Award. My dad went to Willamette in the 70s on a baseball scholarship. And being a teenager, the last thing I wanted to do was to follow my dad where he went to school. So I reluctantly went and it felt right, much to my chagrin. <laughs> I had a blast. I had so many opportunities that I know kids at larger universities just didn't get. Not only did I get to do research with my professors, I got to know them personally. I went to Hawaii with three of my science professors for a summer and did a field studies program with them. One of the opportunities that just serendipitously occurred was they had just started Willamette EMS. And for three years, I was in charge of Willamette EMS and being a new EMT myself, it was an introduction into things that I still use this day. I'm one of those people that decided very early on I wanted to be a doctor, and pretty shortly after I knew I wanted to do emergency medicine. I liked how it felt to help people. I was also working with leadership in the various hospitals we work with and trying to get some of that business education and knowledge, and when the time was right, became the CEO. Through 2020, through the pandemic, as we were all trying to adjust and learn, I worked pretty closely with the fire chief and with the county and with the emergency operations center. As the chief of COVID, I was committed to the community. I was committed to working with our public health officers, working with our hospital staff, ultimately trying to figure out how do we keep everybody as safe as possible, but also being realistic. So the city of South Lake Tahoe awarded me the Hero of COVID Award. It was a surprise and it was humbling to be recognized. To then go on to receive the Distinguished Alum of the Year Award from Willamette makes me want to do better, makes me want to continue on this path of service. And Kendra, would you like to come forward and say a few words? I would. Thank you so much to Willamette and to the Alumni Awards Committee. I have to say, uh, this last hour has just been wild seeing all of the videos and realizing the just how much I'm part of that's bigger than me. Um, Willamette has been pivotal in my life. It's opened doors for me, as you could see, and given me opportunities that have led me on the path that I continue to be on today. Any of my successes have only been possible because of the teams I work with, because of my family and my friends um, who've always been there to support me. And as Anna said uh, previously, you know, I, I have a really strong group of friends, many from Willamette who are on here tonight. So thank you for nominating for this for me, more for me for this. Thank you for being there for me um, through all the times. I think if anything last year, just strengthen those relationships. It's very humbling to be part of this group of people. And then also to realize that even those of us are part of such a much larger, wider Willamette community out there doing so much good. So thank you again um, for recognizing me um, among the many. And last but not least, I wanna thank, especially my husband, Andrew, and my girls, Avery and Zoe, who have uh, been there for me endlessly in supporting me, especially in this last year when I maybe wasn't home very much. Thank you. Well, congratulations, Kendra. Our alumni, as you can see, are an impressive group. And tonight's honorees exhibit how a Willamette education really shapes generations of individuals who embody our motto in its many forms. So please join me once again in congratulating all of our recipients this evening. I know this is kind of trite, but I'll give everybody a clap, a shout out. 
I'd like to close the evening with a reminder that there are more events to come for Alumni Reunion Weekend in 2021. While all the events are virtual, I hope that you'll plan to enjoy them, the many that are scheduled for the rest of this week. So thank you. Congratulations to everybody. Um, thanks again for being here and have a wonderful evening.